in this week's Bizline, Vietnam and Australia marks 50 years of bilateral relations. And later on, new impetus for Vietnam-Australia trade and investment relations. This year, Vietnam and Australia celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations and work toward the goal set by the two countries' leaders to elevate the relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership. There are currently immense opportunities to advance bilateral relations with trade and investment at the top of the list. As such, further deepening our economic cooperation and supporting deeper trade and investment ties will be a key part for both nations' agendas during this important year. With the chance to elevate ties between both nations within reach, let's review the ample opportunities to level up the Vietnam-Australia trade and investment relations in this week's BizLine. We now take a look at highlights in the bilateral trade and investment ties in the following clip. Looking back over the past 50 years, some of the most outstanding achievements in the Vietnam-Australia relationship have been in trade and investment. Since the two countries established the strategic partnership in 2018, the cooperation has entered a new and more comprehensive and substantive stage. Trade in goods between the two countries has grown tremendously, from 8.3 billion US dollars in 2020 to 12.4 billion US dollars in 2021 and 15.7 billion US dollars in 2022, reaching an average annual growth rate of 38%, the highest among Vietnam's trade partners. With the goal of helping the two countries continue to be among each other's top 10 trade partners, the two governments approved the Australia-Vietnam Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy, EEES, in 2021. <coughs> hai nước nhất trí các giải pháp cụ thể vừa có cơ sở thực hiện vừa có nguồn lực thực hiện cũng như có cái cơ chế giả soát thực hiện. There's a bright future ahead uh, with Australia and Vietnam in the trade relationship. Uh, we we want to continue on the diversification of our portfolio of trade and investment. We want to work very hard on um, ensuring that we're supporting uh, the attractiveness of our destinations. National Assembly Chairman Vuong Dinh Hue made an official visit to Australia at the end of 2022, as the two countries look towards the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations. At a meeting with the Australian Prime Minister, the two leaders agreed on plans of upgrading the relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership at an appropriate time. This is a positive sign for the relationship between the two countries. Tôi có thể chia sẻ rất là tâm đắc với một câu nói của Chủ tịch Quốc hội đã phát biểu tại Melbourne vào ngày 3 tháng 12 vừa rồi là quan hệ bền chặt giữa Việt Nam và Australia sẽ tiếp tục là nhân tố bất biến để hai nước vượt qua và chiến thắng những vạn biến khó lường tại khu vực và thế giới. The National Assembly Chairman also asked relevant agencies to strengthen economic trade linkages and considered them a focus and driving force for the development of the strategic partnership between the two countries. We are honored to have with us in our studio Councillor and Head of the Economic Section of the Australian Embassy in Vietnam, Mr. David Gottlieb, to discuss the potentials that lie ahead for the Vietnam and Australia uh, partnership. Well, thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Hung. It's a real pleasure to be here. With the recent official visit of the National Assembly Chairman Vương Đình Huệ to Australia, the visit confirmed the foundation of partnership between the two countries and the most important achievement was the joint statement between the Vietnamese National Assembly Chairman and Prime Minister Anthony Albanese uh, on the intention to elevate bilateral relations to the highest level. So how would this open up opportunities for trade and uh, investment cooperation between the two nations? The visit by Chairman Vung Ding Hui was a, a real honour for Australia to, to receive him towards the end of last year and it's an important year for us, the 50th anniversary of Australia-Vietnam relations. Uh, so that announcement, the intention to upgrade relations to the highest level, uh, is really meaningful for us. It, it will uh, codify and formalise the, the trust that exists between Australia and, and Vietnam. Uh, strategic trust, economic and commercial trust, and trust between our, our two peoples. I think what we're going to see in, in the year ahead is uh, an opening of um, two-way trade, two-way visits, uh, uh, increased tempo of high-level interactions, 
business delegations, business matching, uh, and institutional linkages on both sides of the relationship between government agencies, between business association, uh, and between community groups, all of which I think will facilitate continued growth in, in the trade and investment relationship. Vietnam and Australia have made great strides in uh, improving the bilateral trade and investment ties. So uh, what can you say about these uh, achievements uh, over the past 50 years? Yes, look, there's been so many achievements. Uh, it's been a, a relationship uh, that I think is being characterised by significant milestones throughout that time. Australia was uh, deeply involved in, in some of the early reforms to Vietnam's economy and supporting Vietnam's integration and uh, connectivity with the world. Uh, that includes through our, our government support, our ODA programs, but of course our businesses also played a key role. Uh, some Australian businesses were pioneers in their field. We have banks like the ANZ Bank, which was one of the first foreign invested banks in, uh, to set up an office in this country. Uh, Allen's Link Letters was one of the first foreign invested law firms to, to operate here in, in Vietnam too. And of course RMIT, a well-known university here, mm -hmm. uh, was one of the first uh, institutions to start operating in, in Vietnam and providing opportunities for Vietnamese students to study uh, international standard qualifications at an Australian university and campus here in Vietnam. So look, there's been some real highlights. In my time here in the last few years, one of the particular highlights was uh, the conclusion of our uh, enhanced economic engagement strategy that our two leaders signed off in 2021. Uh, that agreement uh, will unlock further opportunities for Australian businesses and it's already seen Australia move from 14th place among uh, Vietnam's trading partners in, in 2020 to 7th place last year, uh, which I think is a, a, a remarkable progress and it, it demonstrates the strong growth in the trade relationship that has occurred even with all of the challenges that we saw during the COVID-19 pandemic. What are the underlying factors to facilitate growth in trade and investment between the two countries? Well, first and foremost, I think it's that history that I mentioned earlier. Um, Australians and Vietnamese know each other well. Uh, we've worked together, we've done business together for many years, uh, and that's a, a real platform, particularly in tough times like we've seen in the last few years. Um, so we've built on that foundation, that history and, and the trust. Uh, but we've complemented that with, with other really important dimensions. So people-to-people -people links have, have really been critical. Um, there's over 300,000 Australians with Vietnamese heritage, um, and, and many of those Australians are, are coming to live and work and invest in, in Vietnam. In fact, if uh, you meet many Australian-run businesses here, there's often a Vietnamese connection there, and that's a real asset for our two countries. It's a cultural and linguistic bridge, and it helps facilitate trade growth. Um, the last point I'd make is, is just around the cooperation that we have uh, undertaken at the government to government level through uh, various free trade agreements that has helped us uh, to progress, helped us to find new markets and opportunities for our business uh, and help further those relationships that we have between Australia and Vietnam. So there's many other factors I, I think but those are some of the ones that I've seen in, in my time here in Vietnam. Data from the Vietnam Trade Office in Australia shows that in 2022, two-way trade turnover between Vietnam and Australia experienced breakthrough growth, reaching a new record of 15.7 billion US dollars, up 27% over the previous year. For um, Vietnam's imports from Australia, key commodities uh, that experienced strong growth included iron and steel, which grew around 500%. And Vietnam exports to Australia, we also saw quite a lot of growth in iron and steel, crude oil and machinery equipment and footwear and um, textiles and clothing. Assessing the trade relationship between the two countries, experts believe that the industrial structures of Vietnam and Australia are complementary to each other and will allow the two economies to enhance their own advantages instead of competing. I think Australia and Vietnam are very, actually quite uniquely positioned as partners uh, in terms of their regional proximity and their interests, uh, strategic uh, interests and, and otherwise. So I, I have absolute full confidence that their relationship is going to grow. I think, you know, I, th I believe the numbers are something like 30% growth in trade uh, between the company, uh, countries just in the last year or so, uh, and, and I believe that will grow. Experts say that in order to make good use of trade opportunities with Australia, Vietnam needs to improve its investment environment and capacity building. 
thereby being ready and proactive to receive technology transfers, upgrade value chains in both governance and technology, quickly connect with Australian value chains, and reach out to the global value chain. Now, the two economies are said to be complementary. Uh, experts believe that the complementary structures uh, would help the two economies enhance their own advantages instead of uh, competing with each other. So uh, what is your take on this opinion? I fully agree. Um, you know, Australia and, and Vietnam have, have very different and complementary strengths. Um, Australia is, is a, a high-tech country that has the ability to contribute to the modernization and uh, industrialization that's uh, underway here in Vietnam. And, and Vietnam has real assets that Vietnam can contribute to Australia's growth, a really dynamic, uh, young, enthusiastic workforce that I think can make a, a real difference to Australian competitiveness internationally. Um, you only have to look at the famous Vietnamese snack, bang mi, and you know, the, the Australian content, uh, most most imported wheat uh, that comes into Vietnam comes from Australia. Uh, so every time people are taking a bite out of a, a bang mi in, uh, in Vietnam, you know, more than, more than likely they're, they're, they're seeing that complementarity in action. But it's not just in the agriculture space. Um, Australian iron ore is fueling Vietnam's uh, industrial and construction development and, and steel making industry. Um, and our other resources are also providing a, a big impact uh, to Vietnam. Our technology firms are helping to modernise uh, the agriculture sector uh, and our education firms are, are building up the, the, the cap capacity of uh, Vietnamese workers and, and students and, and creating opportunities for them for, for jobs, for income uh, growth and, and other commercial arrangements. So you know, I, I'm very pleased to hear when, when people say our, our two countries are complementary. It makes my job a lot easier. Uh, we don't com compete in too many fields. Uh, and it means that we can cooperate more than, than we compete. Australia is a supplier of uh, services and raw material that Vietnam exporters need and high quality Vietnamese products are also popular in the Australian market. So how can we capitalise on this potential to elevate this relationship further? Our two-way trade has reached almost 16 uh, billion US dollars last year. That's a that's a, a great achievement for our two countries, but I don't think it'll end there. I, I think we've seen consistent growth and there's many things we can do to, to help maintain that. Now, one of the key outcomes of our enhanced economic engagement strategy that we've agreed uh, is to formalise uh, ministerial dialogue between our trade ministers. We've been negotiating free trade agreements for uh, almost 15 years together. Uh, now we have opportunities to look at other issues like market access, like non-tariff trade barriers and other things. So I think that ministerial dialogue will help unlock those opportunities. Uh, we're able to travel more. Our, our businesses are able to see for themselves the opportunities here in Vietnam. And likewise, uh, Vietnamese businesses are exploring opportunities in Australia. So there's a huge opportunity there. Um, mm -hmm. Lastly, I, I think we have some work to do on, on both sides and we're doing that work with our colleagues in the, in the government of Vietnam to help our businesses understand the opportunities and, and navigate the challenges of, of doing business and uh, trading and investing. Um, so we're, we're uh, developing guides and, and resources and other material that will help make it easier for, for us. In 2022, Vietnam succeeded not only in opening the door to potential markets, but also in building and positioning Vietnamese fruit brands in familiar markets. Currently, there are five types of fresh Vietnamese fruits that have been exported to the Australian market, mango, longan, lychee, dragon fruit and coconut. However, the potential for cooperation in agriculture and food between Australia and Vietnam remains high. We are seeing greater demand for Australian, um, sorry, Vietnamese fresh produce, uh, whether it's for dragon fruit or mangoes. And I think the, the key around um, the Vietnamese um, products coming into Australia is, is to, to work with, with, the, with the consumers on, on market promotion. Tôi cũng đề ra cái chiến lược là xây dựng thương hiệu hàng hóa Việt Nam tại Úc và đặc biệt là đối với mặt hàng nông sản từ chỗ là không có thương hiệu thì chúng tôi sẽ tìm mọi cách để xây dựng thương hiệu chúng tôi cũng tìm mọi cách để nhen nhóm lên những mặt hàng mới ví dụ như mặt hàng sầu riêng đông lạnh economists say that the potential for trade growth between Vietnam and Australia is great 
I think there's been some strides made in terms of market access on both sides. Uh, everything from uh, goods, agricultural, for example, services, education services, and also sort of strategic uh, uh, elements like looking ahead, like strategic minerals, for example, uh, that are really going to be very valuable to Vietnam in supporting its manufacturing-led uh, growth and development. So I, I have every confidence uh, that the, the two countries' interests are aligned uh, and that, that they share a lot of the same, the same values. Taking advantage of signed free trade agreements, Vietnam and Australia has opened and will continue to open up opportunities for cooperation between the two countries in many new fields. Now in terms of trade and investment uh, promotion, what uh, cooperation mechanism can uh, both sides employ to further promote uh, ties? As I mentioned, we have our, our uh, Trade Minister's Dialogue, which we hope will occur this year as a, another milestone in our uh, 50th anniversary celebration. There's much more that we can do. Um, we need to look at market access on, on both sides, and our uh, agriculture ministries in Australia and, and Vietnam are, are working very diligently and, and in a dedicated way to, to find, find ways to navigate and, and open opportunities for Australian and, and Vietnamese farmers uh, to sell their goods both ways. I'm, I'm really pleased with the progress in that particular area. We, we know that Australians are now really enjoying Vietnamese mangoes and, uh, and other fruits. Uh, and, and likewise, we've been pleased to see um, Australian peaches and nectarines and cherries finding uh, a great customer base here in Vietnam. So there's many things we can do, but I think we're well on track and, and the initiatives that are underway right now are unlocking those opportunities for our businesses. What are the priority sector that um, Vietnam and Australia plan to develop in the future in terms of uh, trade and investment? Well, agriculture and education have mm -hmm. always been a mainstay of, of our bilateral economic relationship. Our agriculture firms are investing here in Vietnam in, in a very big way. Um, our, our education institutions are forging uh, really important links with counterpart institutions here in Vietnam and, and collaboration relationships. Australia and Vietnam have both made very ambitious net zero commi uh, commitments mm -hmm. at COP26 at the same time. Um, and I think that's unlocking opportunities, allow us to turn the climate uh, challenge into an economic opportunity for, for Australia and Vietnam cooperation. Um, digital economy is another really important area for potential cooperation and we have some really interesting and exciting collaborations happening in that space. So mm -hmm. I think that will continue to be an area for, for expansion and growth in, in the years ahead. Another really important uh, initiative that we've established on, on both sides of the relationship is the new Business Champions Initiative. Um, the Business Champions are a selected group of leaders uh, in different fields uh, who've undertaken to use their experiences of, of trading and investing um, either from Australia into Vietnam or the other way uh, and using that experience to support others to, to realise the same opportunities that they have. So that's another example of a way that we can further promote those relationships. In 2019, Australia topped the list of foreign countries that received investment from Vietnam. Currently, Vietnam has 88 investment projects in Australia with a total capital of 570 million US dollars. Hoa Fat and TH are the two biggest investors, with projects focused on livestock and mining. After three years, TH's revenue has grown rapidly over the years and the company continues to reinvest and expand its scale. In 2022, the stations reached 27 million Australian dollars in revenue. Bắt đầu từ 2019, uh, TH đã đầu tư nông nghiệp quy mô lớn tại Australia bằng cách mua lại tiếp quản và phát triển ba khu trang trại phía Bắc và phía Tây Australia với tổng số vốn đầu tư là 130 triệu đô Australia. Chúng tôi hiện có hơn 750.000 hecta diện tích và hơn 62.000 con bò thịt chăn thả tự nhiên. À, chúng tôi cung cấp à, thịt bò tại thị trường nội địa Australia và xuất khẩu à, sang các nước khác. Sắp tới đây, chúng tôi cũng sẽ đầu tư vào các lĩnh vực trồng trọt, trồng cỏ, trồng bông quy mô lớn và phát triển du lịch trang trại. On the other hand, Australia has more than 500 investment projects in Vietnam with a capital of about 1.9 billion US dollars. This is a modest number, especially since Australia used to be among the earliest foreign investors in Vietnam. 
Australia's RMIT was the first foreign-invested university in Vietnam in 1998. From the very first day of its establishment, through education, RMIT has wanted to shape the development path of young people here. We now have over 12,000 students, we have 17,000 alumni, and we operate in bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, PhD and pre-university training. And we're focused on aligning RMIT's activities in Vietnam with Vietnam's goals relating to economic competitiveness, uplifting capacity in international best practice, in quality assurance of education, and contributing to Vietnam's environmental futures in areas such as sus sustainability. Vietnam has consistently been one of the fastest growing economies in the world for over a decade now. And in years to come, it will be one of the largest economies in Asia. So we continue to invest in our business here in Vietnam. And in fact, in November last year, we increased our charter capital by 50% to over four and a half trillion dong. According to a survey by the Australian Investment and Business Research Institute in 2021, nearly 50% of Australian businesses believe that investment opportunities in Vietnam have high potential and will invest in the near future. Over the last decade, Vietnam has become an attractive investment destination for many Australian companies. However, the investment tie between Vietnam and Australia remains modest. In your opinion, how can Vietnam improve its uh, investment environment uh, and further attract uh, Australian investors uh, to Vietnam? The investment flows between our two countries are not where we would like them to be. Um, Australia is the 12th largest economy in the world and, and yet two-way investment uh, with Vietnam is less than three billion US dollars. So there is room to improve and I'm very confident that uh, investment will become an increasingly important part of the relationship. I mean firstly uh, Vietnam is rapidly modernizing uh, and uh, that I think movement up the value curve for Vietnamese firms is where Australian uh, expertise can meet Vietnam's ambition and I think there's a, a huge opportunity there. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, in critical minerals and battery technologies is an area where Australian mineral resources and, and minerals firms can have a, have a real in, impact and Australian uh, mining firms are some of the, the, the best in the world. Uh, they have particular expertise that I think they can bring to, to Vietnam's development in the years ahead. Um, thirdly, I think as I mentioned earlier, we have an amazing asset in our people. Uh, increasingly, uh, Australian Vietnamese are looking for investment uh, opportunities here, uh, see, seeing the opportunities that will come from, from living and working in this country and that will be a bridge for, for further investment. Um, so I think there's a lot of uh, reason to be very optimistic about future investment flows as more firms start to explore and understand those opportunities and can navigate those for, for commercial success. Now, taking advantage of the signed free trade agreements that both Vietnam and Australia participate in, economists said that the potential uh, for trade and investment growth between the two nations is very large. So what measures should be implemented to fully take advantage of these uh, signed FTAs and also facilitate cooperation between the two countries? Yes, well, as I said, we, Australia and Vietnam have been at the negotiating table together. Um, on, on these free trade agreements for more than 15 years and, and there's a lot of achievement that's, that's been realised in that process. We've opened new markets for, for our, uh, our businesses, um, we've, we've created new opportunities for uh, services trade and investment in, in new areas of growth and innovation in, in our economies um, and we've realised um, quite um, robust uh, uh, processes to ensure that um, our businesses can uh, achieve benefit from, from these agreements. Uh, so we've been working with our, our partners in the government of Vietnam and we're, we're very proud of that work, supporting um, the, the ongoing integration of Vietnam into, into global economic architecture and institutions. And we're exploring ways that we can support Vietnam to uh, effectively and Im efficiently uh, implement the, those free trade agreements and ensuring that Vietnamese businesses can make the most of those agreements. Um, we've uh, supported awareness raising campaigns, we've supported uh, information and advice for uh, Vietnamese businesses so they can realise those opportunities by trading with Australia. 
Um, so this year I think is a, another important milestone in, in that regard and we hope that when our trade ministers do meet uh, at some point this year, uh, hopefully they can also agree some new initiatives to, to help unlock those opportunities for Australian and Vietnamese businesses. Well, once again, thank you so much for being here with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Economic cooperation has played a vital role in pushing forward the Vietnam-Australia bilateral relationship over the years. While the relationship is no doubt in excellent shape, there is always room for improvement. Given the flourishing trajectory of the relationship, particularly in terms of economic ties, the creation of a comprehensive strategic partnership would be a substantial step toward taking the relationship to the next level and it could be matched with a substantive developments in trade and investment. And on that note, we wrap up this edition of these lines. Stay with us for more content or if you're on the go, feel free to download our app BTV Go from App Store and Google Play or subscribe to our YouTube channel VTV4Go. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.